Uh, welcome everybody to yet another session of In Conversations and um, it's great to be talking to Swamiji over this time period and understanding and learning from him uh, the teachings uh, of uh, Swami Satyanand and uh, Swami Shivanandji. And uh, we, you know, it's a great day is approaching us. 8th of September is uh, Swami Shivanand Ji's uh, birth anniversary. And uh, Swami Satyanam used to say that just thinking of Swami Shivanand Ji is equivalent to doing yoga. So we thought it is very appropriate to pick up uh, a topic of karma yoga, which is uh, very close to heart of uh, Swami Shivanand Ji. In fact, he was the one who propounded it and brought it to um, all of us. So we've chosen that topic for a, in conversation today. And um, with that, uh, Swamiji, over to you. I, before I ask uh, my first question, uh, your thoughts. You see, Swami Shiva, Swamiji, Sri Swamiji used to say that we have read about great people like those having great compassion like Buddha or Jesus. But it doesn't actually, we cannot comprehend that. But when I saw Swami Shivanandji's life, this is what Sri Swamiji said, I could relate that there could have existed a being with so much compassion with so much love for service, with so much energy, zest and connection with the divine. And he said that the way of Swami Shivanandji was so unique that every moment of his life was dedicated to the service of others. And so I think it is a very nice topic that you have chosen, Karma Yoga the path of the yoga of service. Because this is something which is very, very crucial in today's times. And Swami Shivanandji lay great emphasis on this. Of course, he is not the uh, author of this. This knowledge has been there from ages. But he has brought it to the fore. He has explained and shown how it is really the thing which can make a complete difference in our life. So it's a very wonderful uh, topic you have chosen and especially because Param Guru Swami Shivanandji's Janmatithi is coming close. Every year 8th of September is celebrated with great gusto as Swami Shivanandji's birth anniversary. So I think it's a very nice uh, topic, very useful for people. And if we inculcate these principles in our life, it will make a lot of difference for us. So Swamiji, before we go into Karm Yoga, uh, if you could tell us a little bit about different kinds of yoga that are there, and then maybe we can go into the depth of Karm Yoga and how is it different from the other kinds? <laughs> There are, there can be many schools of yoga and I don't mean the uh, newer brands of yoga which are coming up now, but schools of yoga. Some of them are the classical practicing forms of yoga like Hatha Yoga, Raja Yoga, Kriya Yoga and then there are some which have to be practiced as a way of life like Jnana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga and Karma Yoga. Of course, there are other schools also like Kundalini Yoga, Laya Yoga and many more. But these six, Atha Yoga, Raja Yoga, Kriya and Kundalini Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Karma Yoga, they more or less cover the entire gamut of different schools of yoga. In the same manner as you can approach the mountain from the north or the south or the east or the west, depending on the path which is more comfortable to you. In the same manner, we can approach 
the summit through different methodologies. And in fact, Swami Shivananji used to say, which is something which Swamiji also, Sri Swamiji also spoke about and inculcated that we need to have a proper integration of the different schools of yoga in our life. If we want to have a good, balanced and enriched life. Right. So, Swamiji, where does Karma Yoga fit into all of this then? What is Karma Yoga? How does it fit into, as you said, it has to be an integration of all forms of yoga. So, uh, where does Karma Yoga fall in? Can you practice Hatha Yoga 24-7? Of course not. Can you practice Raja Yoga, Kriya Yoga, Kundalini? Kundalini Yoga, everybody is so uh, fond of Kundalini Yoga. Can you practice it 24-7? No. Possible for us. But for us, Karma Yoga is something which can be practiced 24-7. Because it is an outlook. And when you develop that outlook, then every moment you can convert into a yoga session. So much so that in the Bhagavad Gita, an entire chapter and a half is dedicated towards this subject of Karma Yoga. And in this, Arjun asks, O oh Lord, you are speaking of knowledge and action, Jnana and Karma. Oh, Jnana seems to be so much so better. Why are you asking me to indulge in all these actions which are appearing to be so problematic. He was speaking about the war which he had to undertake, kill all those people who were you know, close to him. So, that time the Lord explained that not even for a moment is it possible that we can live without karma. Not even a moment goes by Karma is something which has to happen. The moment you take birth, karmas begin. So, don't even think of not doing karma. If, if you don't do it by the body, you are doing it in the mind. You are doing it emotionally. It's happening on a different plane. Physically, it is not manifested, but it is happening. Your minds are in that direction. So, you have to and then when you have to, then if we have a system by which something which is my weakness, if I can convert it into my strength, and if I'm a very, very weak person, and my weakness suddenly is converted into strength, what happens? I become a very, very strong person. That is the beauty of Karma Yoga. Another important point. In any practice of yoga, what do they tell us? Please focus your mind at one place. Do not think of anything else. Mind one-pointed. Does it happen? Hardly two moments, three moments, bus, and then thoughts will start coming in. And the funny thing is that the moment you try to sit down and say that, okay, I'm not going to think of anything, only one-pointed awareness at my Brumadhyaya. It is at that time that the mind starts coming up with thoughts and desires. Oh, this is remaining. Oh, that is remaining. That has to happen. Coming on. Because the mind is very chanchal and it rebels. When that is the situation of our mind, what is the point? in forcing the mind to stay still when it is not possible. Rather, use the mind which is chanchal and use that chanchalta, harness that, give it a direction so that that energy of the mind is utilized that is converted into 
karma is converted into karma yoga that creates lot of purification and when that purification happens the mind automatically stays still i remember many 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 years ago gurudev he had on a very very occasion at rikya swami ji used to be mostly in ekan on a very rare occasion he had come out and he was inspecting what activities had happened and at that time he told that look the same mind which takes you deep into meditation is the mind which does all these activities what you are seeing outside if you train the mind outside then there is no need to struggle with the mind inside automatically spontaneously it takes you deep within that is the beauty of karma yoga when you do it in the correct spirit in the correct methodology and manner then the purification of the mind the ability of the mind to become steady one pointed penetrating deep within comes up without any effort otherwise you have to sit down you have to concentrate mind runs you have to concentrate mind runs co concentrate that goes on and anybody who has practiced yoga seriously will act, attest to this fact this happens so instead of focus fighting with the mind inside he said use that energy outside in construction in clinic in uh, helping the children in all the activities and what is the principle to be done swami ji said that once he had said karma yog ka principle wahi hai karna wahi hai bas mere liye uska main nikal kar ke dusre ke liye instead of doing it for myself do it for others with the same intensity with the same focus the same yearning and same desires but do it for others when you do it in this manner then automatically there is a purification which takes place pithadishwari swami satyasanganand ji was explaining once she said that do not you do not have to stop worrying you do not have to start brooding you do not have to stop getting anxious but just do it for others don't worry for yourself but worry for oh that child look at that she is not able to have food twice a day she is not even having sufficient clothes how can i help her how can i make situation better for her how can i help others how do i worry about others and then swami satyang sanganand ji said that such type of worrying will not give you any blood pressure no diabetes no heart attack all that will go away if you start worrying for others brood as much as you want but not for yourself for others and when you do it in this manner in this spirit then there is a very powerful purification which takes place that is what is very crucial that spirit has to happen this is what krishna told arjuna do it as your duty not because you want to fight because that is your bounden duty so do it because that is what is expected out of you water is expected to moisten humidify fire is expected to burn so that is the duty that is the attribute in sanskrit we call it dharma the dharma of fire is to burn so it burns 
एंड इट इज सेड स्वधर में निधनम श्रेय वाइल डूइंग यूर ड्यूटी इट्स ओके इवन इफ यू हैव टू फेस लॉट ऑफ हार्डशिप्स पर धर्मो भयावह डोंट अंडरटेक वट इज नॉट फॉर यू इट इज मेट फॉर समबडी एल्स इफ इमेजिन वॉट वुड हैपन इफ फायर स्टार्ट स्कूलिंग you apply fire and everything starts cooling down and you apply water and everything starts burning up there will be chaos in the world don't do that just do what you are supposed to do and don't expect returns of that that is the most important thing nishkam now this is an important point many times people say that if i don't have to look for the returns then why do i do an action here we have to understand very clearly that in karma yoga we are not asked to renounce action or renounce the desire for the fruit of the action but we are asked to renounce the desire the expectation of the desire of the fruit of the action so when you do an action there is a fruit of that result and there is a desire to obtain that result and when you have that desire then there is an expectation that oh i should have that then i will be happy it is this expectation which has to be cut out once swami ji had said when you have placed a case in court you have made all the arguments correct perfect a1 but what is the result what is the judgment to be pronounced is not in your jurisdiction is it in your jurisdiction can you make any impact on that no you can't you can make an argument make the argument but after making the argument stop don't expect the fruits of the uh, sorry don't get attached to the expectation of the fruits of course if you are not having an expectation of winning or a desire to win you are not going to make arguments or if you are playing a game game of badminton for example of course you have to play to win you don't play in an indifferent manner and oh i'll play this i'll play that no that is not what is karma yoga just doing it in a laxadaisical manner careless manner oh because what it's not in my hands no i have to do it correctly do it perfectly but having done it don't remain attached to the expectation of the fruit aaye to aaye nahi aaye to nahi aaye mera kaam tha karna maine kar diya baki judge ke upar hai when that happens then the pain the sorrow the anguish the anxiety the fear everything goes away so all the mental chanchalta gets cut away that is one aspect second aspect you are training the mind before that i have mentioned when you do it you have to do it perfectly do you know i am sure many of you might know about this that in the bhagavad gita it is mentioned one of the definitions yoga karma sukaushalam swami ji said that actually there is one small word in brackets it is not yoga karma sukaushalam it is brackets karma brackets closed yoga karma sukaushalam so karma yoga karma sukaushalam perfection in action is karma yoga what yoga bhagwan krishna is indicating is this karma yoga anything what you are doing you are sweeping the road you are cleaning vessels 
you are writing a letter, you are typing, you are doing all manual jobs. Instead of thinking, oh, why am I given this job? I'm better than this. I can do so much more. I have so many capabilities. Doesn't matter. I have been given this job. Let me do it to the best of my abilities. Now, when it is perfection, what is perfection? At one point, you know, in the ashram, it, ha it was uh, uh, raining and the pathway had become quite slippery. So after the rains were over, we were with wipers taking the water out. In that time, Swamiji had come. He stood there, watched. He took a wiper and started clearing the water. And then he said, kept it on, and he stood there and said, you need to understand, this is yoga and this is karma yoga. And when you say do karma yoga, there are four things. You have to do it fast. You have to do it accurate. You have to do it correct. You have to do it perfect. So, like in the example of clearing the water, you have to do it fast. Oh, no, I have to do it perfectly. So, I'm going very slowly, very gently. No, that is not going to work. You have to do it fast. What is the speed expected out of that? Not too fast. What is the speed? Because if you go too fast, you are letting small patches of water remain over there. No, that is not good. So that is not perfection. So when you are wiping, that patch has to be clear of water. It has to be accurate. If you are wiping from one end and then you are wiping the whole th uh, three-fourths of it again, it's not accurate. You are having so much of redundancy. No, that's not accurate. You need to maybe have... You have to observe how much water goes to the side. We need to have that. You Instead of having it straight, put it slightly at an angle so that the water always comes to one side. That is accuracy. It has to be correct. If the slope of the pathway is in one direction and you are trying to take the uh, water in a different direction, is it a correct way of doing it? No. You are uh, doing something which is inappropriate. No, don't do it. So you have to apply your mind. You have to do it. And it has to be done in spirit of perfection. The hand movement, the movement, the application of the mind, everything. When you are walking, you have to be aware that when uh, you are cleaning the water, your feet are wet. So you should not use the feet in a place where you have already wiped it. You know, these are small little things when you do that then you are actually training the mind what happens after that i have cleared the whole path made it nice and beautiful ha so then swamiji is going to say very good and give me a prize no my prize is that i have done it in that manner once that is done my job is over. Now then if Swamiji wants and uh, comes and puts another bucket of water in it, that's not my problem. Because that's not my role to think. What is my role? I have to work in that. So this is how you are actually working with your mind. When your mind is applied, it appears to be a small thing, but I have to apply my entire mind. How can I do it with the best of my abilities? Automatically, the effort is now on doing things perfectly. And when you are doing everything perfectly, what are you doing? You are training your mind. Remember what Swamiji had said, the same mind which does all these activities outside is the mind which will take you deep in meditation. So, if you want to train that mind outside, then use these four things. And when you are doing it outside, actually, that is not the aim. The aim is inside. You are training your mind outside. So, you are training it. After your training is done, you go to another example, take another option, train yourself and train yourself and train yourself. And while you are doing that, you will see so many things start coming up. I am a very highly qualified doctor. I am such an important person. And I am given toilet cleaning. Come on, toilet cleaning? I have to do toilet cleaning? I am so educated. I am so qualified. Why do I do this? 
that means there is gandagi in my mind if i am looking at the spirit of karma yoga any action is very good there is no problem that is something which is very crucial it is not what we do how we do which is important and having done it to leave the expectation when we do that the nishkam bhav comes in then that has an impact on a higher level the every person comes with a baggage the baggage of previous karmas and previous samskaras that baggage of karmas and samskaras play out in our life when we do an action with selfless motive i am not being benefited but i am doing it with this in this manner then it goes and impacts on the bag of karmas they are all the seeds which are there and imagine you have a bag of seeds and this bag of seeds is you have to put it into a patch of land and stuff will start growing from there but you know many of these seeds are not of any value they are not good but you you can't help it because they are going into that patch of fertile land so what to do there is one thing which is known which can kill the germinating ability of the seed if you roast the seed in hot fire either in a oven or in a tawa whichever way then the seed loses its ability to germinate exactly that is what karma yoga does it generates that tapasya within and that with that tapasya since you are doing it for others not for yourself it creates an energy within and all the previous karmas slowly and slowly start getting cut away and that is a very powerful detergent all the soot on the mirror starts clearing out and you can see who you are who am i that becomes spontaneous becomes very easy so that is in a nutshell what karma yoga is all about the level of karma yoga is very deep it's not just physical action but it goes deeper and deeper and deeper but to begin with to get a understanding this is what karma yoga is all about thank you for the beautiful explanation uh, swami ji uh, but i was uh, when you were talking about you know serving others uh, with the nishkam bhav and especially those uh, who are you know really suffering uh, a thought comes to mind uh, you know people who are suffering aren't they suffering because of their own karmic deeds and by helping those are we not in some way interfering um, in the cycle or the law of karma right perfectly correct that is why we pray to god na he bhagwan mujhe naukri de do mujhe naukri nahi mil rahi hai mera karma hai हम शांति से नहीं बैठते हैं हम मेहनत करते हैं हम ट्राई करते हैं क्यों क्योंकि कर्म करने से परिवर्तन आता है सो व्हेन यू आर डूइंग एन एक्शन देर इज अ रिजल्ट इफ योर फिलोसॉफी दैट दैट इज देयर कर्मा सो व्हाई शुड आई इंटरफेयर इन देयर कर्मा द वेरी फैक्ट दैट यू आर getting an opportunity don't you see that that is an opportunity for you to do something god can also say oh those people they are praying why are they praying that's their karma no he doesn't out of his boundless compassion he comes in and intervenes why because by doing that we can make a breakthrough in their life 
and make a breakthrough in our life. That is the beauty. You have not played with the karmic balances. And this explanation which is coming up is one of the uh, simplest explanation which is brought about by armchair discussions. Because, oh, you know, logically this happens, that happens, that happens. But when you see a person in pain and your heart does not melt, what does it tell about the quality of your heart? And then you turn around and say that, oh, all this is Maya, and everything is Brahman. We are all one. Hello? We are all one. If we are all one, then why does the pain of that person not trouble you? If somebody comes and hits you, it's going to pain you. But if somebody hits that person, sometimes it doesn't even pain me. I start laughing and joking about it. Why? Because my mind has got disconnected with my original reality. And this is an opportunity for me to set that right. If it is not his karma or if it is karma, is that my job to even think about it? How many times do we think about my child? Is it in his karma to have this? Is it not in his karma? No, 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 no. My child, he needs to have the best car. For that, I will do anything. I will steal. I will kill. I will do anything and everything. But I will give my child the best car. I am just giving an example. I am not saying any of you do that. When we go to any extent, we justify ourselves. This is only a justification. It is, there is a matrix. And in that matrix, if you bring in a higher dimension, that person is being helped. You are being helped. You, if at all, are creating a good karma. A good karma which will help that person. A good karma which will help you also. So, therefore, even if it is his karma and if it is not your karma, doing it, you are generating consciously a positive karma. A positive ripple is being generated which will have a positive impact in the world. So I don't agree that it is going to create any negativity. It is going to create positivity. We should do that. But uh, Swamiji, just another thought on the similar lines. And while we are doing, uh, and I, I agree, we will help our karma. Uh, but um, a lot of people get dependent. Uh, like if we are giving them food on a regular basis, or if we are giving them money, like beggars, if we are giving them money, uh, they just learn to beg. So aren't we making them dependent on Tell us? Tell me, the have you put yourself in the uh, spot of the beggars? Would you? Would you, if you had an option, choose a life to do that? Who would like to go begging and wear uh, torn, tattered clothes? They do it because they have no other option. Maybe their minds are closed, blinkered, but that is a limitation which they are having. Why can't you have compassion? Maybe that person is cheating you. Here, you are able to have compassion with that person. And when you have that type of com compassion, it transforms that person also. Of course, it transforms you. But it transforms that person also. There is a story of one thief. That thief, he stole something and was running away from the police. And they were cornering him. He went into a garden and in the garden, there was a sadhu who was sitting there. And in this person, he was like now almost going to be caught. The sadhu, he had his bag and in his bag, he, there were a couple of more dhotis. The sadhu was in his state of meditation. Some Suddenly, it came to this, come on, let me also try and be another sadhu. He did that. He put on clothes, basma, sat down. People, he was sitting, sitting down next to this person. 
the police came, went away. And uh, then he saw everything, he started going away. And then people saw, they started doing pranam to him and he knew he was a thief. He was cheating them. But a moment started coming that he said, oh no, no. People are believing so much in me. How can I do that? No, it's not proper. No, it's not. And there was a transformation in that thief himself. So that bad karma triggered a positive change in him. Of course, it did not happen immediately. Over a period of time, it happened. But it happens. So we do not have to worry about what they are doing. We are worry about what we are doing. If I can open my heart, what difference does it make if I give one rupee to that person? Boloto. How much money do we spend on Netflix? How much money do we spend on clothes, on food, on going out? Everything, 101 things. At times we do not think the value of money, the value of importance of this, that. But when we have to give to somebody else, Ah, then the philosophy of economics and everything starts coming in. This is not what practicality is. This is just a trick of the mind because we are trained to take, 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 take. Have a look at uh, all the advertisements. One of the best way of selling an item is Give it free. Even after knowing very well that this is a gimmick, still for now so much, so many years, still it works. Why? Because it's there in the mind. If I can take something free, oh, come on, let me go and have it. That is the attitude which is there. And that attitude binds an individual. If we need to free ourselves, then we need to have the opposite attitude, the attitude to give, to give, give, give and give. Don't worry. Just give. Just give. And this is what Swami Shivananji exemplified. He would not care if that person is true or bad or this or that. He would just give and give and give. And his energy was so powerful. That it transformed anything and everything. It is said about Swami Shivananji that even, uh, I don't know if you know this, Swami Shivananji was a doctor. And after doing his graduation, he sailed to Malaya. And over there, he was single handedly handling three hospitals. And over there, right from a very young age, he used, to, he used to get great joy in helping, in serving others. There is one story that he used to have a cook. So he would say, you should sit with me. I mean, we are speaking of a long time ago when orthodoxy was at its peak. He said, no, 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 no. You are my cook, but you should sit with me. And you know, the Shastras say that the cook should sit on the uh, left hand side of the master. So the poor cook, yes, he would come and sit down. And why did he do that? So that with the left hand, he could. With his right hand, he is eating. And with the left hand, he would serve the cook. Now, who would think of doing something like this? He get, got great pleasure in giving. The moment he heard that somebody is not well, he would go there and spend the entire day, entire night. There, there were times when entire night he would spend in a hospital or in a dilapidated home because a woman is not delivering. And after doing that, he would come back and continue his other activities. When he gave all of that up and took sannyas and he was in Rishikesh and at that time in middle of his uh, sadhana, one sadhana he never gave up, that is the yoga of service. He would go around 
all that time rishikesh was a totally different place there were sadhus and there was hardly anything else so he would go take bhiksha for these old people for those people who were sick who were not well and he would go wash their clothes shampoo their legs make them comfortable and he would create great satisfaction and he has said that this is one thing which is the most important thing which is essential in sadhana especially in the beginning when the mind is distracted plunge yourself head long and neck deep into seva into karma yoga and go ahead keep on doing and then the mind becomes still stationary happy and then spontaneously sit in a moment go into samadhi job done and that is what he did of course he did great sadhana also but he never gave up karma yoga never gave up seva and that is what he told swami satyananda when swami satyanand ji met swami shivanand ji swami satyanand ji used to go deep into meditation and he had come there to ask him how do i go beyond a level because he said that at one level my mind just goes you know into a state of uh, blank so what do i do how do i go beyond swami shivanand ji did not tell we would have thought he would have told oh okay you are doing this so you know instead of meditating this way you do that way nothing doing he said work hard and you will be purified you do not have to bring the light to you the light will unfold from within and that is what swami satyananda did for 12 long years in his guru's ashram he worked hard he did the job of four five six people dhun chad jati hai swami satyananda ji bolte the dhun chadni chahiye it's not just a matter of occupying yourself you should be preoccupied with the work then there is a change which takes place and it was by that grace that when swami shivanand ji called him and said jao yog sikhlao you don't he didn't know any yoga he didn't know anything because he was all he was doing was seva and swami shivanand ji called him and by shakti pat transferred all the knowledge which he had swami shivanand ji had transferred it to swami satyanand ji in one minute swami satyanand ji received everything but for being able to receive that he had to work hard for so long he did not have to do sadhana he had to work hard and swami ji many times has said that it was that which brought success to the mandate which was given to him spread the message of yoga from door to door and shore to shore was a mandate which swami ji received and he said it was only due to that karma yoga that he could make that difference in the world so do not think about oh is this correct is that correct no just you do your duty my duty is to help others what is their duty they will think it's not for me to think doing so you purify yourself you are not doing it for them the seva which you are doing is not for them it is for yourself understanding very clearly you are not doing it for others you are not doing them a favor mind you you are doing it for yourself for your purification for your spiritual progress mental progress and when you do it with the spirit as explained then amazing results happen amazing results take place higher abilities automatically start coming up i have not done any sadhana but sad all things start happening that is the beauty of karma yoga so that is what is important and here i would like to mention one thing 
Swamiji used to say that he does open heart surgery. At Rikhya, he said this many times. He does open heart surgery. My heart is closed. When somebody else is in pain, I don't feel the pain at all. My heart is totally closed, blocked. He opens up all those blockages. Angiography. He is doing a lot of angiography and angioplasty. So that our heart, not the physical heart, but the spiritual heart, opens up. Vajradapi kathorani mruduni kusumadapi The heart of a saint has to be hard like Vajra against Durjanas, against ill people. But for the good, it is softer than flower. It melts immediately, it wilts immediately when it sees somebody's pain, sorrow. And when that happens, then the Atma Bhav comes in. You know about Atma Bhav. Do you know what is Atma Bhav? I am sure you have heard that story of Santa Jnaneshwar. Very famous story. When he had gone to the assembly of pundits and they were being uh, humiliated, one so-called bright pundit was very, you know, aware and there was a buffalo he buffalo going across and the person was whipping him and taking him. His name happened to be Jnanya. He is also Jnaneshwar. That was also Jnana. So now this fellow, he said, oh, look, you are speaking all about Vedanta, right? You are also Jnaneshwar. He is also Jnaneshwar. What's the difference between the two? Sant Jnaneshwar said, yes, there is no difference. And next moment, that person hit the whip on this buffalo's back and a welt came on this young boy's back. Another whip, another welt. Another whip, another welt. And after some time, the buffalo came here. He changed the course and came here. The buffalo came and the buffalo started chanting the Vedic hymns. That is Atma Bhav. Atma is one. And when you have that experience, then there is nothing different in the world. You and I are one. So when you and I are one, does my right hand say that, see, my left hand is feeling cold, so I will not take care of it? Or there is a fly or a mosquito on the left hand. Will the right hand not go and whip it away? Does the right hand say that, oh, come on, it's not my job, it's not my problem. I'm not the left hand. No. Because both the hands know they are a part of one entire whole. In the same manner, we are a part of the entire whole totality. There is no difference between us. It's only at our level of maya, at our level of intellect and understanding, we feel we are different. Yes, we experience them as different and that's true. That's okay. But if we want to go beyond, then this is the way. And this was the state in which Gurudev was in Rikhya. And that is why he felt the pain of those people. And he was inspired to do something for them. He was actually was mandated again there. But it was in this state. It was not in a state of pity. It was not a state of, oh, poor things, how bad. No. It was, I am suffering. I am suffering from that. You know, many, many years later, when, when Swamiji came to Rikhya, at that time, people would come and ask him. That time he had renounced everything. He was only on his langoti. And when people would ask him, Swamiji, we would like to get something for you. He said, I don't need anything. 
I have these two langotis that also I'm keeping because you people are there. Otherwise, I'll throw them away also. Because if I throw them away, you will be shocked. I have no problems. If you want to do something, do it for those villagers. So we used to feel that he was inspiring us to, you know, do for others. But it was much later that I realized that no, it was not just that. That person's pain would hurt him as much as it would my body would hurt me, that would hurt him. And this is not a single experience in one person's life that uh, only Santa Gnaneshwar felt it. It is felt in so many people's life. That is the spirit of Atma Bhav. It is said about Saint Francis of Assisi that he would unite with the spirit of Christ so much that the marks of the cross would appear on his hands. There are evidences about that. There is a story about Tailanga Swami. He used this same spirit of Atma Bhav. Two young children, teenagers, they are always, you know, whenever we look at, they are always rebellious and uh, trying to find out some tricks. So this, they thought that, come on, they say this is, he's a great sannyasi, he's a great sadhu, he has many abilities. Chalo, let's test him. So he was in Samadhi and he had come out and he was meeting people. So people had come offering things to him. So they said, we'll take some milk for him. Only that it was not milk, it was lime water, chuna. So limestone, they mixed limestone in water, which is very, very powerful. It burns your system. And they brought and gave it to him. He looked at it, smiled, and just took the glass and gulped it away. He gulped the glass and he was smiling. Those boys were looking very expectantly. Okay, now something will happen. Now something will happen. And then suddenly one of them started having pain in his stomach. Other person clutched his stomach. All three of them started, oh my God, it's paining. They fell down crying in agony. Because he used the same Atma Bhav. And he said, well, this is one body, but that is also body which is me. Okay, let me transfer a bit of my pain to them. And then they realized, oh no, there is a... So, Atma Bhav is one of the highest state of Vedanta. And you can achieve that through Karma Yoga, through Seva. Selfless service. That is in today's times when our minds are all gone. You tell Please sit down with eyes closed, hands on your knees and mind starts running haywire. So what are you going to do? What meditation are we going to do? Don't do anything of that sort. Go out and practice Karma Yoga. Heavy Karma Yoga. Till the time that you feel totally tired and drained out and, and you will see the more you do, the higher the energy. In the medical camps or any of these activities, and there are so many people who are who have experienced that. You have experienced it. Hmm? Yes, Swamiji. The energy which comes in, oh my God, it's totally mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. And we know it's us who's doing it. There is a higher energy which comes in. And if you want a shortcut to have that higher energy get into karma yoga, get into seva. Because when you do that, you know, you asked some time ago, but it is his karma. So should you get into, you know, all those things? Beta, agar tumko bhagwan ka ashirwad chahiye, to isse jada acha Shortcut nahi hai. Because it is God's duty to take care of all the people, the good, the bad, the everybody. Everybody are his children. So he's going to worry about those people also who are in pain, sorrow, suffering. Now, when he sees that there is somebody 
who is doing his job you tell me you tell me if you have to cut 5 kilos of potatoes that's your duty and then you see oh that person he has come and he is cutting 3 kgs what is going to be your approach to that person you are going to have a soft corner to that person right correct now tell me is it important that i have a soft corner for god or is it more important that god has a soft corner for me bolo it god is god has a soft corner for me <laughs> exactly so when you do his job you say are wo to mera kaam kar raha hai come on let me worry for this person mera kaam jaldi se ho raha hai you know that is what happens the divine grace flows through us and maybe our karma is not telling us that okay we can do this we can do that we will achieve this all those seeds which which i mentioned those seeds are there but when that grace flows through everything goes away so my firm opinion is that if you want a shortcut a fast track method to get the grace of the god the divine karma yoga is the way just get into karma yoga in the spirit not in a careless manner no it has to be in the highest order and then you see the beauty the energy which comes in oh and you get great experiences great great experiences unimaginable unimaginable experiences that happens and so if you want to have that karma yoga is the best way karma yoga is the best way there is nothing better than karma yoga and that is what exemplified swami shivananda once there was a story i know we are getting late with this one example i will conclude swami shivanand ji was a doctor and he was also well versed in ayurveda so he Uh, there were and and uh, Har- Haridwar was on the pilgrim path. So lots of pilgrims would pass pass from there. There was one pilgrim who was having lot of pain, and he was uh, having lot of health issues. So Swami Shivanand ji looked at him, understood, gave him some medicines. The patient felt better. Then he moved on, and then a couple of hours later, Swami Shivanand ji just realized, oh oh. Actually, you know, for this person, instead of this medicine, if I had given this medicine, it would have had a better impact. He thought about it. Oh yes, yes, yes. This is the best medicine for that person. He picked the medicine up, ran along. Now this was five, six, eight hours afterwards because Swami Shivanand ji was doing many things. The first stop after Rishikesh. he went and tried to find out he came to know that person had moved on he went running he spent a day going after that person met that person gave him that medicine and then came back that should be the spirit he did not think about himself he thought only about that person only about him all along that was the only thought which was in his mind and it is because of that that he became a luminous giant in the spiritual dimension of this century thousands and thousands of people have been impacted by him and as you mentioned 8th of september is swami shivanand ji's birth anniversary and it is a very powerful auspicious day to be able to remember him and that is the reason why i was so happy that you decided to have this as a topic for this in conversation because as i mentioned swami ji used to say just thinking about swami shivananda is doing yoga so thanks to you we were able to spend one hour of non stop yoga so this is the spirit we need to keep alive within us 
wanting to reach out to others, having great energy. And then you see the miracles coming through in the world. Aryom Tatsat, Namo Narayan, Jai. Namo Narayan, Swamiji. Thank you. Thank you so much, Namo Narayan, Swamiji. Thank you. Thanks to Swami Shivanandji and of course Swami Satyanandji for you know helping us understand these through you. So thank you so much, Swami. Do we have time for uh, a little time for some questions, Swamiji? If there are questions, sure. Namo Narayan, Swamiji. Namo Narayan. Uh, if anybody would like to ask uh, a question, uh, you can type it or you can ask now. This is the first session we are having. Like, uh, uh, so In Conversations is a series that we've been having for a few months now. Um, each time it happens on the 5th and the 21st of each month. So if you want to be posted on the, you know, uh, on the updates of the upcoming sessions or whether in conversations or a lot of other sessions keep happening. So you can uh, send a message to me on the chat window and I'll share the details with you of how you can. She's see. already in the group. She's already in the group. Yeah, I'm, I'm, but she's very busy. No, sorry. <laughs> You're doing a lot of good work. It's good. Good, very nice. Uh, if there are no like other... today's session, like it was very. Uh... Sure. The previous sessions are uploaded in the uh, this thing. Yes, they are all available on the YouTube channel. Thank so, you, so much, Let's conclude with Shanti part. Please sit comfortably with your eyes closed. Visualize the form, the magnanimous form of Swami Shivananda. Feel his grace. Feel his energy. And connecting deeply to this uplifting energy. Let us chant the mantra Om three times, followed by Shanti. Taking in a deep breath. Om. Om. Asato ma sadgamaya, tamaso ma jyotir gamaya, mrityor ma mrtam gamaya, sarvesham swasti bhavatu, sarvesham shantir bhavatu, sarvesham purnam bhavatu, Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Om Tramba Kanya Jamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urvarukam Eva Bandhanam Mrityor Mukshiyam Amrata Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Ancient Pranamata. Swameva Mata Chapita Twameva. Twameva Bandush Chasaka Twameva. Twameva Vidya Dravinam Twameva. Twameva Sarvam. Mama Deva Deva Twameva Sarvam 
मम देव देव तमेव सर्व मम देव देव हरि हरि ओम सत्सर जेंटली रख योर फॉर्म प्लेस इम ऑन द क्लोज आईज experience the warmth radiating from the palms to your eyes relaxing the eyes the brain the whole body and then gently move the palms away open your eyes hari om tat sat namo narayan jai